All right, buckle up everyone, because today we're hitting the open road. We're diving deep into the world of American road trips, exploring all the lingo and landmarks that make this experience so iconic. Yeah, you know, what's really interesting is how this goes beyond just like the physical journey, you know? Yeah. We're gonna uncover like the whole cultural thing, you know, like the freedom, the spirit of exploration, all those endless horizons and what they mean. It's almost like the open road is like a metaphor for like the American dream. I like that. Okay, so before we hit the highway though, we gotta make sure we're speaking the language right. Right. We've got terms like uh, pit stops, scenic routes, and of course those infamous tourist traps. Yeah. We're gonna break it all down. It's like having a, a secret decoder ring to help you understand not just the maps, but like the stories, the heart and soul of these epic journeys. I love that. Okay, so first things first, why is the American road trip such a big deal? You know, why does it hold this special place in American culture? Hmm. I think it's woven into how Americans tell stories, you know, like think about those classic movies, uh, Easy Rider or Thelma and Louise, or even books like On the Road by Jack Kerouac. Heck, even songs like Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. The open road is like this recurring character, a symbol of escape, self-discovery, just going after something more. It's like the road is a character in itself, this silent companion on these journeys. Exactly. And that deep connection has given birth to a whole vocabulary and a, a way of understanding places and geography that's just so unique. It's like it's like a secret language, you know, mm. spoken only by those who, who crave adventure in wide open spaces. All right. You've convinced me I'm ready to hit the road. <laughs> but before I get too carried away with the Wanderlust, what do I actually need to plan one of these legendary adventures? I know our sources mentioned routes and itineraries. What's the difference? So a route is like the bare bones. It's the skeleton of your trip. It's it's like choosing, do I want to take the fast interstate or do I want to take the scenic back roads that kind of meander through the heart of America? Now, an itinerary is where you really like flesh things out. That's your detailed plan. Yeah. You're going to outline specific stops, attractions, those quirky roadside diners, those things you just can't miss. Okay, so the route gets you from point A to point B, but the itinerary makes it an experience. It's like a story in itself. You got it. It's the difference between just traveling and actually experiencing the soul of the American road trip. All right, I'm already starting to feel the excitement bubbling up. Speaking of experiences, uh, we've got these things called pit stops, right? Now, I have a feeling it's more than just filling up the tank. Oh, you are absolutely right. A true pit stop, it's a chance to stretch your legs, grab a bite at a local diner, maybe even discover a hidden gem of a roadside attraction. It's all about soaking up that local flavor, talking to people, you know, and embracing the unexpected. That's what makes each road trip unique. Okay, when I think pit stops, the image that pops into my head is this classic roadside diner. You know, our sources mention this term, tourist trap, but it almost sounds endearing in this context, like, are we supposed to avoid them or seek them out? Well, you know, there's there's a certain charm to those over the top, often kitschy attractions. They might not be for everyone, but they add a layer of fun and, and absurdity to the whole road trip. I mean, think about it, the world's the largest ball of twine or those giant roadside dinosaurs. They're meant to be over the top. They're a little ridiculous. And that's what makes them so memorable. It's like they're, they're winking at you, yeah. inviting you to embrace the absurdity of it all. And that actually ties into this idea of Americana, which I know our sources mentioned. You got it. Roadside attractions, especially those tourist traps, often tap into nostalgia, a sense of shared American history, even if it's presented with a you know wink and a nod. They're like quirky time capsules, offering a glimpse into a different era of American culture. So we've got the planning down, we're starting to get a feel for the vibe, but what about actually navigating these vast highways and byways? Our sources mention terms like merge, detour, and exit. Are these just about following the rules or is there something more to them? Well, I think these terms go beyond just practicality. It's about understanding like the rhythm of American driving. Merge implies cooperation, right? Drivers seamlessly blending into that flow of traffic. A detour suggests adaptability, you know? A willingness to kind of go with the flow, embrace those unexpected turns that life and the road throws at you. And then exit, of course, represents choice. The freedom to veer off the beaten path, you know, and explore something new. It's like these driving terms, they reflect a certain mindset, a way of approaching not just the road, but life itself. Exactly. It's about going with the flow, being open to possibilities and understanding that, you know, the journey is just as important as the destination. I'm loving this. Now, our, our sources also mentioned this term, mile marker. 
seems pretty straightforward, but I have a feeling there's a deeper meaning here. You're right, it's more than just a number on a sign. Think about it, in these vast American road trips, mile markers. They become milestones, markers of progress. They remind you how far you've come, what you've accomplished. They become reference points for stories, for memories. Yeah, so instead of saying, hey, remember that amazing diner? You say, hey, remember that diner? Just past mile marker 127. It adds a sense of place, a connection to the journey. Exactly, it's a way of anchoring memories to the route itself, turning a simple number into a symbol of the journey. All right, let's talk about some specific routes that really embody this whole road trip spirit. Our sources highlight uh, Route 66 and the Pacific Coast Highway. What makes these roads so special? Well, they've become cultural icons, right? They transcend their function as just roads. Route 66, often called the mother road, is more than just asphalt. It's a symbol of like a bygone era of American travel. It's a journey through time, filled with classic diners, neon signs, a sense of history kind of etched into every mile. It's like traveling through a living museum, like a, a testament to a different time. You could say that. Route 66 is a journey through the heart of America. It's a reminder of a time when, well, the open road represented freedom and possibility. And then you have the Pacific Coast Highway, winding along the California coastline. This route is all about the scenery, those dramatic cliffs, you know, plunging into the ocean, those iconic California sunsets. It's, it's a feast for the senses. That sounds like the definition of a scenic route, right? Like prioritizing the experience, the beauty of the journey itself. Absolutely. The Pacific Coast Highway shows why that term scenic route is so important to, to road trip vocabulary. It's not about getting there fast. It's about, you know, enjoying the ride, embracing the beauty that unfolds along the way. Okay, we've covered a lot here. Planning, essential vocabulary, the heart of those iconic routes. Uh, I can practically feel the wind in my hair. But before we hit the gas, let's zoom in on those roadside attractions, those quirky stops that make every road trip unique. I'm ready to embrace the absurd. That's where the real fun begins. We've touched on tourist traps, but there's a whole world of weird and wonderful stops to discover. Are you ready to dive in? Absolutely. I'm ready for all the details. Okay. Well, one pit stop you can't miss is the roadside diner. Now, this is more than just a place to grab a burger and fries. It's a cultural experience. Think about those classic diners, you know, with retro vibes. They're serving up comfort food in a friendly, down-home atmosphere. It's like stepping back in time. I'm picturing it right now. Checkered floors, red vinyl booths, a jukebox playing those classic tunes. It's like a scene from a movie. Exactly. It's that classic Americana vibe that makes those roadside diners so special. And of course, no road trip is complete without a stop at a souvenir shop. Oh, yes, the souvenir shop. Land of quirky trinkets, postcards with like cheesy slogans, yeah. maybe even a shot glass with the destination, you know, right on it. Exactly. They're like treasure chests of memories, right? They let you take home a little piece of your journey. They might seem silly, but those trinkets often become reminders of the experiences, the laughter, the unexpected encounters, you know, the things that make road trips so special. It's incredible how each of those terms, you know, tourist trap, roadside diner, souvenir shop, mm. just paints such a vivid picture and ties back to this idea of the American road trip as a cultural experience. It's the power of language, right? These terms aren't just labels. They're they're doorways to a world of nostalgia, adventure, shared experiences. They're they're like the building blocks of the stories we tell and the memories we we keep, you know, long after the journey's over. And on that note, I think it's time for a pit stock of our own. We'll be right back to continue our deep dive into this fascinating world of American road trip vocabulary and geography. Okay, we're back, and our engines are revving, ready to roll. Before our pit stop, we were cruising through the language of the American road trip, exploring those quirky roadside attractions and those iconic routes. We covered a lot, but you know, the journey isn't over yet. There's, there's so much more to discover. Absolutely. And speaking of discovering, let's shift gears a bit and talk about the actual like landscapes, the regions you might encounter on one of these classic American road trips. Mm. I'm talking about mountains, deserts, forests, those wide open spaces. Yeah. The real heart of the American landscape. Yeah. The geography of it all. Think about how diverse, how incredibly diverse the American landscape is. I mean, you could be driving through towering mountains with those snow-capped peaks one day and then boom, the next day you're cruising through a, a, a sun-drenched desert. It's like driving through a nature documentary. Yeah, it's that sense of vastness, that feeling of endless horizons 
that makes it so unique, you know? And I, yeah. and I bet there are specific terms, words that, that capture the essence of those different landscapes, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. For example, imagine, you know, cruising along a coastal highway, the Pacific Ocean just stretching out beside you as far as you can see. Can you, can you feel that ocean breeze? Yeah. Smell that salty air? Or picture yourself winding through a, a mountain pass surrounded by these these towering peaks, the road just twisting and turning like a ribbon through the, the rugged terrain. Wow, I can practically feel the elevation change. Those sound incredible. And what about like those wide open spaces, those landscapes that just seem to go on forever? What terms come to mind there? Desert plains stretching out in front of you like, like a, a canvas, the sun beating down on the sand. A sense of solitude and silence that's almost overwhelming or or envision yourself driving across the the great plains where the horizon just meets the sky in this endless line you know a landscape that that just evokes freedom and possibility it's amazing how just hearing those terms coastal highway mountain pass desert plains great plains like it creates such a vivid image it's it's like you can feel the wind in your hair the sun on your face that's the power of language, right? These terms, they're not just geographical labels, they're portals to, to different worlds, mm. each one with its own unique beauty, its own atmosphere. They capture the essence of these landscapes and they just, they transport you right into the heart of that, that American road trip experience. Our sources also mention this term back roads. What's the significance of those? Are they just, you know, roads that are less traveled? Back roads are, they're a departure from the, the well-worn highways, you know. They offer a chance to slow down to explore those hidden corners of America that, that most tourists never see. They might lead to charming small towns, quirky roadside attractions, or breathtaking natural wonders, you know, those places that are off the beaten path. Taking the back roads is about embracing the unexpected and discovering those hidden gems that make each road trip unique. Yeah, it sounds like taking the back road is all about savoring the journey, you know, hmm. taking the scenic route and allowing for those those serendipitous encounters you wouldn't find on the main highways. Exactly. It's about embracing the detours, the unplanned stops, the unexpected discoveries that that make the American road trip so special. So we've talked about iconic routes, diverse landscapes, the essential vocabulary. But I'm curious about the people who actually make these journeys. You know, <laughs> what are some terms that describe the heart and soul of the the American road tripper. Ah, the people behind the wheel. You might come across the term road warrior, describing someone who's practically made the road their home. They've logged countless miles. They know all the best routes and hidden gems, and they just, they embrace the open road as a way of life. Yeah, I love that. It's like they've, they've become one with the asphalt, like a true citizen of the open road. Exactly. And then you have, you know, the weekend explorer, someone who's seeking adventure, escape from, you know, the daily grind through through shorter but but equally memorable road trips. They might take a weekend getaway to explore a national park or visit a nearby city or simply just enjoy the scenic beauty of the countryside. Yeah, it's like they're they're injecting that little dose of adventure into their everyday lives using that road trip to recharge, reconnect with themselves. That's a great way to put it. And, and of course, we can't forget about that term wanderlust, right? That deep-seated desire to explore, to experience new places, to to embrace the freedom of the open road. It's, it's a feeling that many, many road trippers share, a common thread that binds them together. It's that shared spirit of adventure, that curiosity about what lies beyond the horizon that, that makes it so special, such an enduring phenomenon. And speaking of shared experiences, I can't help but think about music, right? The role of music in all of this. Mm. Our sources mention playlists, but I feel like music is more than just background noise on a road trip. Oh, you're absolutely right. Music, it's an essential part of the experience. It sets the mood. It's the soundtrack to your journey. It can even spark those those sing-alongs, those shared moments of joy. It's like it's like having a constant companion, you know? Yeah. A friend who understands the emotions, the, the experiences of the open road. It's like music becomes the voice of the journey. You know, yeah. expressing those feelings that words sometimes just can't quite capture. Exactly. And certain genres, they just seem, you know, tailor-made for road trips. Think about those classic rock anthems, those those soulful country ballads, the storytelling magic of folk music, even the bluesy tunes that, that evoke, you know, a sense of longing and freedom. These genres, they just, they speak to the heart of the, the road trip, you know? They capture those those emotions of the open road. I'm already imagining myself cruising down a desert highway with a, a classic rock playlist blasting on the stereo. And don't forget about the radio. You know, tuning into local stations as you travel can be a fantastic way to, 
to discover new music and, and to get a little glimpse into the local culture, those regions you're passing through. It's like the radio becomes a, a sonic tour guide, right? Yeah. Introducing you to the sounds, the stories of the mm. places you're exploring. You got it. And that sonic tapestry, it, it becomes part of the road trip narrative, you yeah. know? It adds another layer, another dimension to the whole journey. Okay, so we've talked about landscapes, the people, even the music that makes the American road trip so special. But what about those unexpected moments? You know, the, the detours, the wrong turns, the, the unplanned adventures. Are those just inconveniences or are they, are they part of the magic? Ah, those unscripted moments. Those are often the moments that, that make the best stories. They force you to, to adapt, to embrace the unexpected, and to create memories that you, you never could have planned for. It's, yeah. it's about letting go of that rigid itinerary and just allowing yourself to, to be surprised by the journey. Yeah, it's like the road itself is throwing you a curveball. Mm -hmm. testing your your adaptability your sense of adventure and sometimes those curveballs they lead to the most incredible discoveries you might stumble upon you know a, a hidden waterfall a charming local diner or or even a breathtaking vista that wasn't even on your map it's about embracing serendipity and and letting the journey just unfold in its own unique way it's like the the road trip itself is a metaphor for life isn't it full of twists and turns, unexpected challenges, and and serendipitous moments of, of joy and discovery. You hit the nail on the head, and that's the beauty of it. It's not just about reaching a destination, it's about embracing the journey itself with all of its surprises, challenges, and, and moments of, of pure joy. It's about discovering something new, not just about the world around you, but about yourself. Wow, I'm, I'm feeling inspired. Mm -hmm. We've covered so much ground in this deep dive, from mm -hmm. you know the nuts and bolts of planning to the cultural significance against the emotional resonance of, of this whole experience, but I feel like we've only just scratched the surface. You're right, there's, there's always more to explore, more stories to uncover, more roads to travel, but hopefully we've equipped you with the vocabulary, the, the knowledge, the inspiration to really appreciate the depth, the, the richness of the American road trip. I'm, I'm already dreaming of hitting the open road and experiencing it all firsthand. But before we embark on our own adventures, I think we should take a little detour, you know, refuel and gather our thoughts. We'll be back soon to wrap up this, this epic deep dive into the world of American road trips. Okay, we're back and ready to cruise to the finish line of our deep dive into American road trips. It's been quite a journey, huh? We've decoded the lingo, explored those iconic routes, and even, you know, uncovered the the deeper cultural meanings that are woven into this, this quintessential American experience. Yeah, I feel like we've been on a road trip of our own just just talking about it. Yeah. But before we reach our final destination, let's let's take a minute to recap, you know, some of those key takeaways, those essential nuggets of knowledge you can you can take with you on your own adventures. Think of it like packing your linguistic suitcase, right? Yeah. Making sure you've got all the right tools to understand and even, you know, talk about American road trips like like a seasoned traveler. OK, so what are some of the the must have items in this in this linguistic suitcase? Well, we started with, you know, the basics of planning, right? Remember that difference between a route that's that's an overall path you'll take and an itinerary, your detailed plan with, with the specific stops, attractions, all that. Right. And then there's the pit stop, which is so much more than just gas and bathroom breaks. It's a chance to, you know, stretch your legs, maybe savor some local flavor at a roadside diner. And, and who knows, maybe you'll stumble upon a quirky roadside attraction you'll be talking about for years to come. Speaking of which, we can't forget about those classic terms that capture like that spirit of Americana, tourist trap, roadside diner, souvenir shop. They're not just words, they're they're portals to a world of of nostalgia, kitsch, you know, good-natured fun. And then there are the terms that that paint those those vivid pictures of the diverse American landscapes you might encounter, right? Coastal highway, mountain pass, desert plains, great plains, back roads. Each one just evokes a unique feeling, a sense of, of adventure, the vastness of, of the American landscape. Exactly. And those terms, they're more than just like geographical labels. Mm. They, they represent experiences, emotions, you know, even a certain way of life. They help us understand why the American road trip is so much more than just getting from point A to point B. Yeah. We also talked about, you know, the people who make these journeys, those adventurous souls who embrace the open road, yeah. the, the road warriors, the weekend explorers, and anyone with that, that undeniable wanderlust that, that calls them to, to hit the highway. 
And and let's not forget about the the soundtrack to these adventures. Whether you're you're creating the perfect playlist, tuning into local radio stations, or or simply just enjoying the sounds of silence, the the music we choose, it it becomes part of the story, part of the memory. It's it's amazing how all these terms, these linguistic tools, they help us to to not only understand but but to appreciate the the richness, the the complexity of the American road trip. It's like we've been given this this secret decoder ring to unlock a whole new world of experience. And now that we, we have that decoder ring, it's time to go out there and, and create your own adventures. But before you hit the road, I I want to leave you with one final thought-provoking question. Ooh, I love a good thought-provoking question. Lay it on me. If you were to plan your own American road trip, where where would you go and and why? What kind of story would, would your route tell? What what landscapes would you seek out? What what roadside attractions would you embrace, and and what soundtrack would accompany you on your journey? That's a that's a fantastic question. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just about absorbing information; it's about about applying it to our own lives, our own dreams of adventure. Because ultimately, the American road trip is is a journey of self discovery. It's about exploring not just the world around us, but but the world within us. It's about creating memories, stories, experiences that'll stay with us long after the, the journey is over. And who knows? Maybe someday we'll we'll gather again for another deep dive. This hmm. time sharing stories from our own our own epic road trip adventures. I'd love that. Until then, safe travels everyone and, and remember the open road is calling.